So hello everyone, this is Rob Kelly, creator of the Thrive Programme and this is the very lovely Mary. Mary's now 84 and three years ago Mary went through the Thrive Programme to learn how to thrive but also to overcome a huge fear of being sick known as emetophobia. So I'm checking with Mary now three years down the line and um, if it's alright Mary I'd just like to ask a few questions. Yeah sure. Rob. Try not to look quite so frightened. So Mary, uh, is it, well tell us about your metaphobia. Do you still have a metaphobia in any way, shape or form? No, I don't have it in any shape or form. I just live a life. I don't, I still don't like the idea of being sick, but I just don't think about it anymore. And I know that if I was, I'd cope with it. But it's a freedom that I didn't have for 75 years. A complete freedom from a mind full of, do I feel sick? Was that a bit of sick on the ground? Is my friend going to be sick? I just, I was just overcome all the time. And if I was going out for a meal, I wouldn't enjoy the meal. I usually wouldn't eat it because I think it might make me sick. But I'm afraid, or not afraid, that's a silly thing to say, but for... Three years now, thanks to Rob and Thrive, I go out and about, I enjoy myself, and my mind is full of more interesting things. Do you ever, Mary, do you... Because people, emetophobes that are watching this will think, oh, yeah, well, you know, um, uh, she probably still has the thoughts, but is good at uh, batting them away. Do you have any scary thoughts on a daily basis about being sick? No, not on a daily basis at all. Not, not at all? No. It's not that you've just got really good at fighting these thoughts off. No. You simply don't they, have them anymore. They just don't appear. They've gone. What do you think, Mary, was the turning point for you? Um, if, if you had to name one thing, one thing going through the programme, one belief or something that, that you think made all the difference to you, what was that? It was this thought that... However much I don't like the idea of vomiting, the thought that I could cope with it. I'd never thought of that before. I just always thought I must not be sick whatever happens. I just suddenly got this idea that I still wouldn't like it, but I knew that I would cope with it. And really, that that's, was the beginning of it all, Rob. Because of it, so if, if it's... <clears throat> If, if there's something that one cannot cope with, then understandably you have to avoid it on yeah. pain of death. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. But when you, re you reduced it from I couldn't cope at all to actually it wouldn't be very nice, but I'd be all right, I could cope. Yeah. That was the, I, I remember you at the time, that was the big change. In terms of um, your thriving life now, you, tell us about your thriving life now. I know at the moment, I'm sorry to hear that your cancer's back, but... Without being rude, you don't seem to be affected by that very much. Doesn't, funnily enough, cancer doesn't worry me. Um, cancer doesn't worry you? No, I've, <laughs> had, it, I've had it twice before. Uh, it's, not a, it's not the old ones, this is a totally different one. I've got over it twice before and I firmly believe, especially if I'm thriving, which means I'm having a happy life, not too much stress, I think I'll overcome the cancer. So it, it's not a big, it's not a big problem to me. You mentioned to me last time I saw you that you were, you were waiting on, you're waiting till you were 100 until you get your birthday card from the Queen. Is that something you still think about? I do still think about that right. because it was a promise I made to myself when I had a ovarian cancer back in 1981. And... Having made that promise at that time, through it, it was a place I went to that believed in helping you to overcome your cancer. Now, the only problem is the Queen will be dead. But if I'm lucky, it might be King William okay. who sends me a card. But that doesn't mean I've necessarily got to die when I'm 100. But All right. I've, I know that I can live to 100 at least. OK, good to hear. What about, Mary, what about people out there that think, oh, uh, you know, I, obviously her, hers wasn't that bad, you know, mine's really bad, my emetophobia, hers can't have been that bad. What would you say to them? Well, if I tell you 
that one, I trained as a junior school teacher and I loved the job, I certainly loved the kids, but because kids would come up and say, please miss, I feel sick and then proceed to be sick. After one year of teaching, that's my whole career that I'd hoped to have, I just had to give it up. When I had my first cancer, they wanted me to have chemotherapy and in those days chemotherapy meant every time you had it you'd be sick for about three days and I refused it. And I was more or less told if you don't have chemotherapy you'll die. Well at that time I'd have sooner died. So just the fact that I gave up a career that I loved, that I would rather accept death than being sick. Do I need to say any more about how strong it was? And how, and how do you feel? How do you feel looking back at that person now, when you're so full of life? How, how does that feel looking back at that person? That you're thinking you'd rather have died. I feel like how sad, because to me, I I've wasted a lot of my life unnecessarily. However, in my earlier days, there was nothing like Thrive around and the sort of treatment that I did get some medical treatment, but it was no help. But I think now that Thrive is there, if you really, what you do have to work at it, you do have to do it. It's no good thinking, oh, he won't know, I don't have to do this bit. If you really do everything that the book says, I think you are bound to end up thriving and enjoy your life. Some people, Mary, some people say, oh, you know, I've read the book twice and I'm no better. And I try to explain in the book, as you know, that Thrive is a doing thing, OK? Reading the book's not going to make any difference at all, is it? How much time, how much effort do you think you put in on a, on a daily basis for those six weeks? Oh quite a lot because at that time I'd recently lost my husband and I'd got no job so I'd, I'd had nothing to sort of take me away from it but I would think to average it out because some days I would be out and not do much but I would say possibly a couple of hours a day. Okay and you, you were talking you did a video uh, for one of my groups earlier on today and you talk about you know what did you say on that video about how committed you have to be, how much effort you have to put in to do this. Yeah, it, to me, it's the priority. I've, I was trying to help a young teenage girl and she kept saying, but I haven't got time for this, I've got so many things. Now, when we looked at all the many things, they weren't all things she had to do. And if you happen to love going out photographing birds, does it matter if you don't bother to photograph them for a while? To me, if you've got a emetophobia and if you want to start enjoying your life, then getting rid of that emetophobia should be virtually the top on any list of what you're going to do. It's, it comes first, not somewhere down the pile because you're busy. Just think, when you achieve it, you'll realise how worthwhile it was. Um, one final thing, Mary, thank you. How different, not just in relation to metaphobia, but how different are you? How different is your, your feelings, your attitude towards life now compared to what it was four years ago when you had severe emeto? It's totally different. I mean, even things like I've got quite a bit of arthritis, most old people have, and I find if I'm going out, instead of like in the old days, I'd be saying, oh, this awful pain, I wish I hadn't got to go to the shops. I now sort of, I literally think differently and I pull myself up straight and I think, I'm going to walk as though I'm going out hiking with some friends and I start swinging my arms and to be honest, within five or ten minutes, I've forgotten all about the arthritis. It's, it's just... In the end, it's a totally different way of thinking about everything. So if it's pouring with rain and I'm just looking out my window, and it is, and I've recently got interested in gardening, 
So now I think, well, the rain's not much fun to go out in, but it's doing a lot of good to my garden. It's wonderful that we get a bit of rain. And it's, I've even seen spiders that I was terrified of spiders. And they can just walk across the room now and I just totally ignore them. And it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's as though your whole life you've been bogged down and something has come along and removed it all and suddenly you're light and airy and you're free and life is fun and in fact I realise nowadays life is beautiful. I love looking at the sunset, sunrise and I think, God, what a wonderful world. Never mind all the horrible news, the beauty out there. So again, look for the beauty in life, not keep looking at the bad things. You, you must... It's something you have to do if you've got emetophobia, is to yourself make the effort, get rid of it. Don't walk about on crutches for the rest of your life and in pain. Chuck them all away, please. Mary, thank you very, very much. And hopefully, sweetheart, what I'll do, if I'm still alive in, in uh, 16 years when you get your 100th birthday card from King William, we'll come and do another video. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. All right, thank you very much.